You're listening to the AfterBuzz TV Network. Now the largest new media platform on the web and your number one source for after-show entertainment. Very good, The AfterBuzz Studios in Los Angeles, California. Presented by Maria Menunos and streaming live thanks to Akamai Technologies. This is AfterBuzz TV's Falling Skies After Show. We'll break down tonight's episode and get you all the latest news and gossip. And now, another post-game wrap-up show for your favorite TV show. It's AfterBuzz TV's Falling Skies After Show. Welcome, ladies and gentlemen, to another Falling Skies After Show for Season 4, Episode 7, Saturday Night Massacre, although it is Sunday night here when the show actually airs. When the show airs and we do Ironic. this show. Ironic. They should have just named it Sunday Night Massacre. Every episode <laughs> should take place on a Sunday. That. Just to match, Just to match the day of the week that we watch it. That that, that I, I'll just need this episode maybe. It didn't it wasn't specific to Saturday? It didn't need to be a Saturday. Okay. Anyway, that is the voice of Nando Velasquez. Yes, hello everybody. We have Roy. I, hello everybody. <laughs> and I'm still here, Phil Svitek. Welcome in, <laughs> ladies and gentlemen, for joining us. We now know what Lexi is and what look what she looks like as a butterfly. I didn't really see a difference. I might need to rewatch last week's episode to see because they're like, look at her eyes. And I'm like, her eyes look normal. They look more normal than, than they when... used to look. Yes. Like yes. humanly normal? They look human normal. They looked human. She doesn't have, didn't she have, she had very white irises. <laughs> <laughs> okay. For those of you wondering, we have Mr. Hiccup in the, in the engineer booth. Sounds like a frog. <laughs> it sounds like Sorry, a frog guys. on the instant. And then no matter what, I can soundproof this entire thing. I'm still going to hear the damn hiccups, and they're going to make all of us laugh. So I had to call to it because they're we're never going to get hiccups. through this. They're really loud. It like, sounds like a, a whale dying. I am. <laughs> <laughs> right. I'm sorry. Right. I'm sorry, guys. <laughs> you should be. We got a serious Sounds show. Like we got one of the best episodes in, the, in like the entire season. Uh, and I have to talk about a dead whale. Stephen Lemieux, everybody. I All would right. have to fight you on that part of saying that this was one of the best episodes in the season. I'd have to so far disagree. This one, for it being... It wasn't the, the happiest preview, episode. No, but the way the preview set it up, it was as though it was going to have so much like drama, so much fighting and all this. There wasn't. There was one you fighting scene. two major deaths. Okay, yeah, there was a lot of dead people, you had, but you not... had a cliffhanger of an ending with several characters, and, and, and who knows what's happening to several characters. But only one of them really died from... <laughs> one of them from is still the dying, in the boot. dying in the boot. I, I just... I was... One of, well, come okay, on, let, let's, go on. let's go back to Lexi. Yeah. We got sidetracked with yeah, everything. Yeah. <laughs> okay. She's reborn. When, when they said, you know, when they gave the whole analogy of caterpillar to cocoon to butterfly, I thought that she, we all thought, I think, that she was going to come out and emerge as an alien. Rather than, oh, here's a naked different Lexi. Lexi. Well, yeah, we thought there would be some kind of, tra when, when we hear the word transformation, we assume to see something yeah. physically different. Yeah. Other than just the different color eyes. <laughs> eyes that are just slightly different, and her hair. She looked kind of wet. Her hair well, was all straightened. She flat. was in a cocoon. She was in gel. Yeah, that's what I'm saying. But that's what I'm saying. As far as the transformation, that's not much. That's not what I consider a transformation. Yeah. You know, every time I go to the shower, I'm transformed. Then, <laughs> because my hair is because my hair is flattened and wet. Fair enough, Roy. Okay. What's your What's your take on just the transformation specifically? I know I set myself I was, up for that. I was disappointed one. about it, but maybe there's more to it. Later down the road, we'll figure out what exactly she is, but. There was, was well, little. the big transformation seemed to be more emotional or mental uh, with Lexi because she didn't really change physically much. Yeah. So, but just the way she was talking, she was talking very, very like alien speak. I feel the transformation wasn't complete because she kind of she went out, and you know she was well aware of what was going on. Mm. To the point that, <laughs> right off the bat, she says, you know, Anne says. What you know, you're always going to need your family, and she was like, "Not you." Yeah, wrong family. Which was different than what we heard from last week, or what we assumed from last week. Yeah, I mean, we were, we, we had her, Roy and I had this big conversation about what that meant, mm -hmm. how it was going to happen, and boy, just 
within the first minute out the window. She does yeah. not care about the Masons one little bit. Especially well, when she again, called her father Tom Mason and not father. Well, so, it was yeah, that, that was the, probably the first uh, major sign when she called her her dad Tom Mason, kind of mm-hmm. like Cochise does, or or any of the other aliens. If any, you know, when they talk to him. Uh, also, you know, they, they had that touching moment at the end of last week's episode when Anne puts her hand up on the cocoon and doesn't get burned. Kind of like a very Khaleesi moment um, in Game of Thrones. Uh, it doesn't get burned, and and Lexi reciprocates. So we see that. So it seemed very touching in the very beginning, but then all of a sudden, Lexi pulled her hand away, and then shortly after, that's when she gave birth to this transformation. Well, I think it's because of the crowd that was coming out. She could feel it's, the anger and their hate. It and seemed like that seemed to be violence. her excuse. Yeah, yeah, I was going to say that seemed like her excuse that these people, she senses the fear, she senses their hatred, and uh, she just their can't Their inability be to change. Yes, their inability to change. But you know Which who is, didn't change? It was Lourdes. She still was the same. Well, Lourdes was just being a brown nose. She's like, I, I, I was with you the whole time. She chose her words wrong. Yeah, <laughs> yeah. I love you. I, I mean, was she with you? What, what, what was she freed of? Just the the miserableness of human existence. Mm-hmm. Well, that's what was interesting because because when they were when Lourdes came up to Lexi at the end there when she was on her way out and said she wants to go with her. Lexi said, you know, Lord has talked about the change in her life since Lexi came, and Lexi's first words were, like, see you in a lot of pain. So right from then and there, it was just very obvious. It was like she was going to free her of that pain, mm-hmm. I felt. And she's like, yes, please do. But then, whoa, what, are you, what are you worse. doing? <laughs> yeah, it looked like she gave her quite a bit of pain to begin yeah. with. But, uh, yeah, she seemed to be hurting right before she finally keeled over. Yeah. So, but I, I, I can't be that sad for Lord is dying because the character just. We, we even talked about it with Drew two weeks ago. The character is kind of annoying. The actress maybe it probably isn't. Sechelle's not, but the actor, the the character is, of Lord is. I, I, I mean, she. I love to hate her though. <laughs> she was one of those characters. I suppose. So. <laughs> she tried so hard. Yeah, but she, everything she did was wrong. <laughs> I mean, not necessarily. I mean, you could just say about. at least. At least at least someone had faith in Lexi and, and was supportive. And yes, she was a bit of a brown noser, but at, uh, yeah, you know, may, maybe she really did believe in. That. Well, look what it got her. Look what it got her followers later on. Lexi's followers later on in the episode. So you know, we'll get into that. I'm sure more later. But yeah, I mean, anyone who really and you know, it even had Tom questioning and and Hal bringing back that argument. Hal pretty much went up to Tom afterwards and said, "I told you so." Yeah. You know, which was kind of a really interesting, you know, turn for him, too. Because even though he was he was kind of more unsure of himself last week, but now he's like, I told you so, as if he was the one that was calling it the whole time. Well, why don't, why don't we speak to that only because, obviously, later on, Tom apologizes, and yet Hal has a pretty quick turnaround of, like, you're not always going to be right, Dad. And pretty much says, I love you, nonetheless. Yeah. What was your guys' take on the apology and how quick that turn was it, it seems more like hey this is business but in family i still love you no matter what business will have our disagreements but i love you so if anything ever happens but that was the problem know. you know there was business and there was family and family was lexi yeah and lexi what well, family that, did this i think that's the bigger question from the top of the show when it comes to lexi i mean we saw how powerful lexi is we saw her turn around pope and have him point his gun when when she was doing all that, while she was doing that with Lexi. So we saw how powerful that was. And obviously, uh, Hal is saying, you know, you you always want to protect, you know, the the Masons. You always think the best of the Masons. And the question is, is Lexi even transformed as this butterfly, as you like to say? Is it still right for Tom Mason to back his daughter? Uh, Is she still a Mason? I was specifically asked. Weaver said so. And he said, yeah, she is. Listen, if my daughter called me by my first and last name and not mother, I'd be like, okay, there's something wrong with this child. Well, there's something (laughs) wrong with it. But Well, Anne even said that there's still, Lexi's still inside there. She senses Lexi's still inside there. But whatever this alien half of her, whatever it is that's, you know, is taking over her right now. But just like, just like Weaver said with his daughter, Jeannie, that uh, eventually she saw the light. He also feels that Lexi will see the light. I thought okay. that was lame that Anne made Tom promise, based off of their love, that he will still try to mm-hmm. save okay. their daughter. That was so, ugh, come on. So how, how, do you, how, do you, him. how do you save someone like that? Because I can only imagine, I, I mean, I don't know if this is the indication, but with Hitler Youth Camp earlier on in the season, like, 
is the only way to save Lexi is to brainwash her by doing that no, style? No, because of... that wouldn't be authentic to brainwash. I mean, what do you mean for the Ashveni to? Uh, Not to... the Ashveni, the humans. How the do you, humans? how do you break Lexi? How do you, how do you love? I'm sure it'll love. be love. I'm sure love is the some... key. Hal doesn't believe in love, though. I know Hal doesn't believe in love, but it'll probably be something like love. It'll be the bond of family. It'll be, you know, Ben's obviously working on her, but it'll it'll be mm -hmm. something. Something ben, Ben's very being human. worked on. Mm -hmm. Well, that's true. But ultimately, I mean, this there's two themes to Falling Skies, and one of them's family. So we see that definitely plays a part in Tom's decision to uh, let Lexi go and not deal with her the way you know Pope and Hal wanted him to. And uh, the other thing is the human spirit. So family and the human spirit seems to be the two big things. So I think human spirit's going to win out more. I don't know. I have this awful feeling that Hal versus Tom Mason. Just Hal had... versus Tom Mason. That would be well, interesting, but I don't, I, I don't think so because uh, that was a moment and they apologized at the end. Or, or at least, you know, they, they pretty much apologized and said, you can be wrong some of the time. Hal said, I still love you. You don't have to be right all the time. So I don't think it's going to ultimately come to t the two of them butting heads. But, but Hal doesn't believe in love anymore. No, he does. Oh, I he guess he does. he convinced him when he, she goes, well, I could have given up on you when you... Was uh, that the turning point when he I, I wouldn't say still that, believed in love? I think that was love? the turning point. Because I wouldn't say he Maggie kinda... convinced him, but I would say definitely seeing Maggie possibly get hurt, that shifted him really fast. Yeah. That's what I would say. But he still had I that think standing. It, it brought, his, brought it to his attention that yeah. she's right, that love is huge. I, I, I don't think he came out of that conversation agreeing with her, but I think but, it took her possibly being dead for him to wake up and realize, you know, yeah. his feelings for her. Way to go, man. Wait till it's too late. There you go. Just saying. Just that's a lesson from Roya. There you go. <laughs> Here's another lesson. I mean I, I love I love this show and I love the cliffhanger and we'll kinda of backtrack in a moment. Yeah. But I, I do wanna say this. My, one of my big questions is gonna be, is Maggie also dead? No, nope, she's apparently alive. We see in the teaser, and that was for me. Like, why? Uh, well, why? don't spoil. You shouldn't have said that because there's some people that actually, unlike us, who don't watch. The okay. Teasers. Well, you know what? Maybe Seems I should be one of those them. people because guess what? Stop. Why? That could have been the cliffhanger. I, that could have been such a cliffhanger. Is Maggie dead? I don't think they would have killed Maggie. I don't think they would have either. But at least like, <laughs> have it be a big thing, big topic of discussion of like, is she dead? Is she alive? No. Well, we could have had that discussion, but now you spoiled it for everybody. So. I did not. I am not the one who started the spoiled train. Okay. Well, I mean, she. It could have happened to her. This is the second, like next season's the last season. Mm -hmm. So who knows what's gonna happen? Oh come on! There's too many people like you. Like they you already killed a bunch of people. Sarah, Sarah Carter. I well, I think how something bad might happen to Hal. I, I, I don't know, want it to. I, I know something bad is gonna happen to Hal. I don't you think be quiet. Gonna happen to any of the major characters. Don't say that. <laughs> hey, Laura just got killed. Yeah, I don't consider her a major character, though. I honestly don't consider her. I mean, she's been in all the seasons, but she's just very... I, I found her very expendable. I don't think Maggie's expendable. Ouch. Fair enough. <laughs> well, Chinatown was too good to be true, mm. but um, if you guys were paying close attention to the entire episode, you guys may have noticed the Walmart commercial, <laughs> which is fitting because... I'm going to go into a Walmart Whoa, live read right now. What a now. segue. <laughs> it's the world's best segue because it ties into In, the actual episode of the episode. It ties into the commercial of the episode, but yes. But that that's what, it's brilliant. <laughs> it's brilliant. Um, anyway, what, what the commercial in the episode failed to touch upon is savings catcher, which is a simple and easy way to save. Right? I mean, just as the name implies. Mm -hmm. um, you ever drive around town and you're trying to pick up a lot of stuff, but you're trying to get the best savings you can, so you end up driving just basically everywhere? Yeah. Yeah. All Coupons the and all that yeah, stuff. Yeah, of no course. More. No just more. driving all over the place. It's a headache. Mm -hmm. You know, my mom used to do this. It's a, it's a nightmare. It's a headache. And you're, mm. you're probably wasting more gas than you really need to be. Walmart makes it easy. So become a savings catcher today. All you have to do is just enter your Walmart receipt, um, and if any eligible item you purchased was advertised for a lower price, you get the you get the savings. You get it back? You get it back. Um, you can enter your receipt online um, with the Walmart app, then Savings Catcher does all the work for you. Um, it also calculates within the area the lowest price. So it takes into factor, you know, as you were driving around trying to find your low savings, it does that for you, it'll find the lowest savings, and it'll just calculate it. You'll get it all back. So, 
Thereby leaving you more time to watch Falling Skies. <laughs> That's what it comes back to. Well, you know, I, I like this uh, Walmart program because I, I feel like lots of stores sometimes advertise that they have the, the lowest price. And if you go up with an advertisement or and you show them the lowest mm-hmm. price, that they will, uh, they'll give you a refund or whatever. They'll, but, you know, you have to haggle sometimes with these people. Sometimes it's just annoying. What I like about this is but you that's you much, having to be active. Here you just... Yeah, exactly. Just the receipt, you just receipt, done. You can do it on the, online. You can do it on the app. And you can get the savings that way. It's as simple as that. You don't have to worry about showing an ad. You know, they, they document all these ads and everything. So I, I love that idea. So go to walmart.com slash savings catcher. That's walmart.com mm-hmm. savings catcher. Simple enough. Yeah. Awesome. It's awesome. So check it out. Get your savings. It's definitely it's definitely worth it. And especially in the time and age of falling skies, time is money. Yeah. Anyway, um, <laughs> all right. Uh, we've kind of been all over the place and I you know, I just we've been given general direct general opinions. Um but let's let's talk about the aftermath of Lexi. I I'm surprised that more wasn't made of it, particularly by Pope, especially mm-hmm. the fact that you know she is this powerful and she was able to affect them in such a way. Yeah. Are you talking about after she's already gone? Yeah. Or okay. Yeah. Well, I think Pope got to bitch and moan a bit to uh, <laughs> to Tom for a little bit, and then he then they moved on because they had to worry about the attack because right after that. Well, I mean, um, I think and was the one who pointed this out, but this attack was going to happen if, had they killed Lexi, this attack would have happened. Yeah. Now the fact that she's gone, this attack is happening. Mm-hmm. Yeah. So, if, well, yeah, because Anthony got captured. Him and his group were captured, and then Anthony got set free. Well, Lexi was the one one person that was holding back any aliens from coming in to attack. Mm-hmm. She was the one holding the peace. So, with her leaving, because she felt that uh, the humans around her didn't want to hold the piece the way she did, she pretty much opens the door. But if again, if they killed her, pretty much the Overlord would still be coming to attack Tom because he has a vendetta against Tom. He would have two after him. Because then the father would have been pissed that probably, his daughter was killed. Probably both of them <laughs> yeah. would have been going like after him. Gemini's. Probably, probably, so probably they'd be in worse shape. That's what you're saying? Yeah, yeah. I could see that. But either way, they're still you know stuck with an attack being imminent. Um, they come up with a game plan pretty fast. And I like, I, first off, I love the fact that Tom calls her Dr. Glass. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Continually. Uh, but Dr. Glass has an amazing idea. I love mm. this. I, I'm going to call it Acid Rain. The Acid Rain the plan. Mm. And she said, all you need is aluminum rust and a lot of love <laughs> to create that. <laughs> so that could be Tom. a song. Yeah, it could be. That could be a song title. Um, what, did, what did you guys think of the overall plan? I mean, it, everything was headed towards, like, you know what, the final stand. Yeah, I mean, uh, you know, brilliant deduction. Obviously, this they figured out from uh, Anthony coming back that he was there to deliver a message. You know, his, uh, of course, the person he's with. I uh, can't remember the name of the person, but we've probably never seen that person before. <laughs> Just made up a name and said that guy died. Burned alive. Um, burned alive in front of the Overlord. So he's there to send a message. So, uh, you know, smart on them to figure out that uh, this was a vendetta thing and it was personal and they weren't just going to bomb the place with beamers. Uh, you know, they were they were going to go in for a ground attack. So very smart. Like Stalingrad. Yes, of course, you got to have a little history lesson in there <laughs> uh, when, they're, when they're doing a battle. They have, to, they have to look at other battles in famous history and figure out in famous history, other battles, <laughs> other famous battles in history, to uh, to curtail what plan they do, and uh, yeah, so good old WW two. Yes, mm-hmm. so what they we go with today. yeah, so they take take down the bridge to limit their access, and then they pretty much cover, put all their forces in the one area that they're going to come and attack from. Why couldn't the Volm help them fight this? Why did they have to just blow up the bridge and disappear? I think the Volm have always, they've always stated, I mean, as much as Cochise would like to, I think they've always stated that they are there for different reasons. And anything that they do really is more because of Cochise, uh, his affinity for the humans and for Tom Mason. Uh, if it was a, if Shaq was in charge, they probably would just be going off wherever. Peace. You know, <laughs> but he has to luck. follow. Yeah, but he has to listen to, to Cochise. So that's why he's helped a little bit. Yeah, and I, it's also a matter of, you know, we can get involved, but at the same time, not at our own risk. Yeah. Because, you know, while we want to help the humans, if we die as well, 
the Hells left. Yeah, their mission, their but, recon mission is over as well then. They don't really have a... Oh, never mind, I'm not going to get into it. Go I'm ahead. Get into it. No, I mean, the Vom even said that their planet doesn't exist, so why not? Why not help? Because they still have to survive. So? They could still help. <laughs> like, and be they a did part help. Of it. They did help. Oh. They took out a beamer at the end. Yeah. Coaches Whoop took out a beamer at the end. And, and a bridge. bridge. And a bridge. And it supposedly saved. Well, never mind. I don't know. Just why? So frustrated, the Vol. I am super frustrated. Oh, my goodness. Okay, they cannot be your personal lord and savior in this show. They can't. We can't. But they have the weapons. Why can't they? They because have a vendetta it, against the Espeni as I well. Mean, so, what? I mean, come on. They cannot. They cannot get. They can't no. be the answer for every time well, the humans get in trouble. They shot down the ship that was flying. No, you, they didn't have to. You, you do have a point. I mean, they should be part of the a major part of the battle. So, as if Drew Roy was here, he'd probably say they didn't want to put Volm in too many episodes because <laughs> that that costs extra money for you know makeup and special effects. Okay, I think it's that, but I also think you, you know eventually there's going to be a final battle, you know, whenever that may be, where they're all together because it's the last actual final stand. See, this is not the final stand. I don't agree with you on that either. Okay, I, whatever. Because I, I think, no, I just think it's ultimately about the human spirit, so it's going to be humans versus Ishveni and Skaters. Yeah, but we got to convince the Volm. The Volm. Well, the Volm needs to die then by helping, the, or, you know, I don't want them to die, but the, they got to do something to make it worth it. The Volm will be there it. to pick up the pieces and to cheer on the humans. I, that's what I feel. Sound like a no, they, 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 no, they can't just be the <laughs> cheerleaders. No, we got to, through the human spirit, we can convince the Volm that, hey, this is, this is it. It's all of us or nothing. Just like in today's episode, which, by the way, I thought it was a brilliant plan. Like, hey, yeah, I think the plan came right as um, as Pope was saying it. Like, oh, so we're all going to die together? And he's like, actually, that's a good idea. Yeah, yeah. we are going to die yeah. together. See, look, Pope came to help. He was helpful. In his in own way, he, yes. He knew about that fallout bunker. He, no, he knew about the bunker. He well, could have kept told it to him. Yeah, but he could have used that to his own advantage with Sarah and left the team to figure out on their own and run around and freak I out. I don't think of that as a major, like, oh, my God, he made, he's such it's a hero. It's a point, okay? I, I mean, I don't think that's a major you got to give thing. Pope a point for that. Why do one you for like the Pope Volm, so much? One for the Pope. Oh, oh, man. Take one away for the Volm because they could have done more. So could have Pope. Pope could have done more. That's, that's just a, light, a very minor thing. It involves Pope saving his own butt as well. He's like, all right, Pope let's go in here. here. It's all right, let's get, into the, let's get into the Pope storyline with, with Sarah. I love it. <laughs> what do you love about it? It's hope. It's the love of the whole series. And Pope finally has someone to care for, but not, and she's opposite of him. We find out when she kind of breaks down in front of him that she's not like him. She shows she's not opposite. strong. Yeah. And he's okay with that. So, and I like that. He doesn't need someone that's just like him. He needs someone to take care of and be sarcastic with. Nando, yeah, your thoughts. <laughs> Thank you. I love you, Pope. Uh, <laughs> Sarah gave up pretty fast. I Well, yeah. Sarah was a badass until this episode. All of a sudden, she's like, I want my mommy. Now, she's, she's kind of curtailed uh, into a totally different type of person. So, I... Uh, you know what? I heard your podcast last week that I wasn't at, and I do want to say, because I know you guys are talking about Pope a lot, I don't want to repeat everything, but I want to say, Pope, I want to like Pope. I want to like Pope. Pope is, this is a Steven Spielberg you know, production, so I want to consider him like Han Solo, but he just has to stop being such a whiny bitch all the time, and I want to see character development. Sarah's the best thing to happen to Pope because it's a possibility for for character development, but... I almost, I, I was wondering about this. I almost think Sarah has to die for Pope to really change because, I, well, like we'll change get into, for the worse, to change, change for the, the better, to change for the better. Because I, I really feel like in the in but the past four it, seasons, Pope still be, you know, every now and then Pope shows that he's a really good guy, but then he gets back to being like a hoarder and in it for just for himself or whatever. So it's great to have somebody there that he likes and he's there with. Okay, but if she dies, then he should become more bitter against yeah. everybody. Or, or he'll have a, a reason to stick with Tom uh, and fight mm. and fight the good fight instead of retreating. I think he might want alive. revenge, kind of like the Overlord wants revenge to Tom for burning him. He might want revenge for the you know for the aliens for doing something to Sarah. She's gonna get pregnant. 
I'm gonna just throw it out there. Well, they, they definitely need to have more scenes, more love scenes. But you know, this scene was just like Pope being whiny and bitchy, and then he's finally kind of like, oh, we get to shoot some skitters, get to get some monsters, and then she's all like, I don't want to do this anymore. I want to leave. Mm-hmm. And I really thought she was gonna die based on her conversations about going the last to Florida. Day. And yeah, <laughs> I don't want this to be my last day. Let's go to Florida. We have enough fuel here that we can go down there, or you know, there's a fallout shelter. Just her being really like, I don't want to be at this battle. Yeah, I, I thought so too, and especially with how, I mean, she looked, she acted as if she was really wounded mm-hmm. during that scene. So I thought it was one of those moments when he was saying, you know, you did good, you did fine. That was like, oh, he's just telling her because she has two minutes to live. Yeah, that type of speech. That's what I thought I, too. I mean, it, 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 had it gone that way, yes, it would have been a little bit stereotypical, but I wouldn't have necessarily minded it. Mm-hmm. I don't mind that it went this way either. I don't know what to think of it in that regard, but you're good for him. He's still got Sarah. <laughs> Certainly Hal doesn't have Maggie, at least for now. Well, and I want to blame Ben for that, by the way. He gave her the kiss of death when he said, good luck. Why do you tell someone good luck right before a battle? Because he meant bad... to say, I love you. Doesn't matter. You don't say anything. You go, all right, bye. And that's a worse... Like, Raya, knock on wood. Stop getting so mad at the episode. <laughs> <laughs> sorry. She's so frustrated. How <sighs> dare you? I'm sorry. How dare you say, good luck. Okay, what? what? <laughs> you say, break a leg. That's the same battle. thing. That's what you say before a battle, right? Break a leg? No, that's for a theater. <laughs> I'm just making sure, because you don't what say I, good what, luck in theater. What, what I like about this episode is that Hal still, obviously, with with Maggie and Hal being sort of at odds mm-hmm. because of last episode, I, I like that. And remember, you know, we talked about their conversation a little bit. And, you know, with Ben's good luck thing, it's because, you know, he feels like he's sort of won, because he convinced Maggie last episode of... Hey, we can't kill Lexi. Yeah. yeah. So I, you know, and he's he's finally feels like that connection is returning, and and I I really do think that good luck meant I love you, stay alive. Yeah, I'm sure in a way it did. You know, obviously he sacrificed his bullets, gave them to Maggie. It was kind of his way of of showing a little gift to the girl he has a crush on. It's just a matter of right now, there's still that little triangle. We don't know exactly what's going to happen. And, uh, you know, when, when Hal started talking about love and how love is a human weakness and he started saying how we should, you know, just kill people when they're... Uh, infected, yeah. When they're infected, the first sign of infection, we should just kill them because it's just... Love is, is a, a weapon that the Ashvani are using against them. Okay, mm-hmm. could I... Could I- Love is a weapon that I feel like it's right now the Masons aren't on to okay. Look at it this way. Yeah. Hal and Ben. They okay. both kinda love the same woman. Mm-hmm. That could be at odds, right? Yeah. Now Ben tells Matt a secret, which he then tells Tom. So Which so we ben, all knew that was gonna happen. Okay, I understand that, but Matt can't <laughs> keep a secret, so then therefore Ben can get mad at Matt, right? Okay. Yeah, but okay. he's still a kid. Uh, uh, uh. He's not done. We're at odds. He's not. Okay. 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 And made Tom make a promise to save Lexi. That could, co- you know, be at odds later on when Tom has to make a tougher choice and mm-hmm. say, you know what, that's not Lexi anymore. We got to kill her. And ain't gonna like that. And that's not gonna happen. I feel like we're slowly finding weaknesses in the Mason love. This team is never gonna break apart. I'm just saying this these are these are things that they can either make or break this family. This He's got a point though. Gonna... He's got some valid points. It could make we're being break tested. Any other family, we're being tested. But not the Mason. They have to come. I'm I'm saying they they will come through. But in this season, we're putting them to the test. Someone's gotta get burned. Who do you think's gonna be in those little triangles? I think Ben's gonna be burned because he's never gonna be able to. Love. love Sarah. Or Maggie. Yeah, say Maggie, because <laughs> there's a character named Sarah. Maggie. <laughs> yes, okay. Yeah, so. Maggie. <laughs> uh, I don't know if anyone's going to get... I mean, obviously, someone in this love triangle is going to get hurt, ultimately. Uh, it's not going to be Maggie. Well, it's not going to be Maggie, because she could choose from either of them. Uh, it'll probably be Ben. I agree. It'll, it'll probably be Ben. ben. I agree with that. But still, the fact that Hal, at least during that whole scene where he said, you know, that love is what is our weakness and it destroys our judgment and we should kill anybody that does that, even though Maggie was uh, talking, trying to talk him out of it, it made me think, like, well, maybe this whole Hal Maggie duo won't be lasting much longer anyway. I don't think it will. There's no, there's no real love there. Yeah. 
And he's got Hal's got a point though. That old couple from before, love got in the way, and that's why the old man died. And that's true. Same. That's true. Sacrifice. Anyways, yeah. I'm, I'm sorry. I'll drop it. <laughs> <laughs> I'm just holding back my hating on. Uh, yeah. All right. Hating on the episode. <laughs> Not you guys want to talk about the battle itself? What battle? Well, let's. We should also bring up before we talk about the battle. Uh, ben going off to rescue Lexi. Sure, let's talk about. Let's that. just really quick because I think I think I might get lost in a shuffle. And uh, I mean that's a, that's a cliffhanger in itself. Instead of Ben convincing Lexi to come back for the battle, like Lexi she forces him. Yeah, to... that's so unfair. Well, for yeah. a harness kid to be forced... And he's got uh, that just, harness. He's always going to get pulled at from ben, it. But, like, but yeah, so we don't know what's going on with Ben right now. To be fair, that was the risk he knew he was taking. I mean, first off, you have Lexi, who's pretty much like Lucy. Mm -hmm. Go see that movie if you haven't. Or just watch <laughs> the trailer to get the reference. Um, either way, you don't know how powerful Lexi is. You assume that she's going to know who you are and that she'll believe, and you'll be able to turn her. But you you have to go in there knowing that that isn't always going to be the case. And that wasn't the case. Yeah. Well, but, you know, to, to do another movie, it's kind of like that whole, like, Return of the Jedi when Luke Skywalker goes to the Death Star to try and change his father, to bring mm -hmm. his father to the to the light side of the Force. It's almost the same thing. But he ultimately does. He ultimately does, but he's pretty much taken captive. And that's what happens with Ben. Ben is taken captive right now. He's going to probably end up being on the uh, Shvenny ship or... or you know, at least surrounded by the aliens. I think there's something with Ben that Lexi needs because she made a comment to him about how, oh, you really do love him. Because when she was talking to Lourdes, you remember how she's like kind of was a little bit of disgusted by Lourdes mm -hmm. and what she felt inside of Lourdes. Uh, ben, she was more intrigued by it. So she said something to Ben about like love and, oh, you really love him. Yeah. Love them. Hmm. And it kind of seemed like it was an evil plot in her head. I'm just conspiracy against Lexi. But still, I feel like there's more to her trying to get him on the ship versus being like, sorry, I'm just going to go without you and then run away like she's been doing and poofing around and turning around corners very fast. She's okay. Saying. She's super fast. <laughs> she what's is. Your, what's your take on it? Do you, what, like, what do you mean? on on Say what specifically? The, the conversation that she had with Ben. It was more... She saw something inside of him. Well, I think I think if anything, she's like tabling the conversation for next week's episode. Uh, it just seemed like I mean, she's, she's going to be tabling the conversation f until the whatever. season finale. Until the season finale, <laughs> and probably. that may be a cliffhanger she's like, too. Ben, come with me, and we'll talk more about this on the ship. Just join me. So uh, I think Ben had some, uh, you know, amazing. He's, he had some amazing points. I mean, he told Lexi, "You don't know my family before you were born. What they were doing before mm -hmm. the war. So they're not all that way." So, in other words, Lexi's big argument was that humans can't change, but Ben was saying they ha they they did have to change, and they could change again. And ultimately, Lexi will change too, hopefully, as a result of that conversation. Hopefully, hopefully, your take. Ryan. I think it will. Oh, I, I brought it up. <laughs> right, she brought it up. <laughs> All right, time for the battle. Again, what <laughs> battle? That's my thing. It was a strategic battle, not necessarily a battle of. F full f on fighting previews from for last from last week for this week made me disappointed. That's all. I thought there'd be more to it. I'm sorry, you like war. I like do you being anything, promised what I'm promised. Do you have anything positive this episode? Yeah, it was Tetra was amazing. Okay, what Tetra? Who? Tetra? <laughs> Who? Tetra? Did I spell it? Who? The guy Tector. with the Tector. Well, they they on the captions it was T E T R A. Oh, it's Tector. Damn, I can't speak. Okay, that's fine. <laughs> anyway, so yes, the battle was. Uh, it was strategic it rather was than just like, oh, let's go guns a blazing. Yeah, and then of course Maggie has to be like, I will stay here and I will catch up to you. <laughs> that's how she sounded too with her gun, and she said it. It's like, why, why, Maggie, why? Because she wanted to make. She wanted sure... to get pinned down. Don't take that anywhere else, please. <laughs> <laughs> Well, it, 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 okay. you know what? For for what it was worth, there were a lot of deaths in this episode. They, um, I mean, Lexi's followers all decided to do a, a move from Gandhi or Martin Luther King and try and promote nonviolence and be the front line. And uh, Dingan, if I can say his name right, uh, tried to get them back, and he, he was able to get one or two of them to snap out of it, and everyone else got shot down by a mech, by the first mech that came around the bend. Uh, and, uh, yeah, I mean... There, obviously, there was uh, these guys mean business when they're coming in there. 
Absolutely. Yeah. Anything else? Survival of the fittest, man. I mean, it was a great episode. I mean, look, we saw the thermite. We saw the acid rain didn't annihilate that first wave, which was a pretty cool scene in yeah. itself. We got to see that. I mean, the humans are outnumbered. That's part of but, it, too. But I'm glad, I'm glad um, you know, it's just, it just went to shit. Yeah, the gas line is what bothered me. Why? Because Why it blew you? up and it destroyed their whole plan. It was a human fault. Like, uh, it was nothing to do with the aliens. It was something unexpected that sometimes happens in <sighs> war. Well, you know what? I don't like that, okay? <laughs> well, I want to sign up for the military. Let me know how that goes for you. I think you you just wanted the humans to win this episode, right? Is that what you wanted? I did. You just wanted them to win. I wanted and then there will be no episode next week. No, I wanted them to fight. I want there to be more fight, more confrontation between them and the splinter. Splinter, oh my god. <laughs> Skitters. <laughs> yeah. Sorry. And uh, there wasn't. There was one Skitter. That blew up. No, there was one. They were keeping them. I thought that was a pretty good battle if they were able to keep them at bay for at least a little while till the gas may break. Till they smelled gas. And they started trying to save everybody. And so, so, you know, I mean, in terms of numbers, 100 now we're down to 30, but 20 that are actually able to fight. Yeah. And So they lost a lot. And out of those uh, able-bodied 20, we're down to 19. Well, I think they said, uh, if the numbers are right, I think they said they lost 30. They didn't, they weren't down to 30. They lost 30. No, I think they were down to 30. Yeah, no, they were down to 30. And then 20 were, what so was it? So they lost more than 50% of the people. Okay. Yeah. Wow. They lost a lot of people. How's that going to be happy? Okay. I mean, did you did you see that bunker? Yeah. There yeah, was not there was people. people. <laughs> <laughs> you know, you can count on your fingers as, as the camera pan left and right. Yeah, that was pretty badass. Which, by the way, I hate when nobody's answering how. Like, has anyone seen Maggie? Like, <laughs> they're all worried about themselves. <laughs> Hiding other okay. things. And there's twenty of you. Just say like, yeah. no, Maggie is not here. <laughs> Maggie, who? Who's Maggie? Like, that would be stupid. <laughs> anyway, um, okay, so let's let's talk about Tom Tom's sacrifice. Right? Pope puts this in his head. Like, oh, it's always got to be about protecting you, and you know, why don't you sacrifice yourself? Yeah. And Pope goes off of that. Or not Pope, Tom. It's not the first time Tom has sacrificed, been willing to sacrifice himself. So I don't know if Pope really had anything to do with it. It's just Tom being stubborn. But what? Hating on Pope. Can't give him credit for that, can you? Is that really credit? I didn't know it was credit for Pope. Okay, Pope changed Tom's mind. I don't know. Tom, that's his character. Pope spoke the truth, man. Tom's character is always to make sacrifice. (laughs) It's true. Yeah. And and to the point where Tector, who had the better gun... He had that Civil uh, War rifle that could shoot like up to 1,000 yards, 700, 700 yeah. yards, and uh, had that rifle and could have made this shot to kill the Overlord. And Tom insisted on taking his gun instead. And uh, luckily, Tector got to go out there, and in a scene that what like the aliens were supposed to come within 10 minutes, but it took like forever because they had we had to deal with the death of Qatar, yeah. which we'll get into, I'm sure. And then we had to get into all this other stuff. How's screaming for Maggie? To be fair, they said 10 to 20 minutes, and if if you know for us watching, that was like seven to eight minutes. So but there felt was a- well, all right. Here's here's you'll agree with this, Roya. Okay, because <laughs> okay. this is obviously negative. This so is 24. We're at the bottom. No, 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 There's no, a no. countdown no. of like, well, okay, let, let me speak. next wave coming let, in. Let me speak. 19. Let me speak because Roya's gonna love this. Because Roya's gonna <laughs> love this. I already know it. So uh, the gas main explodes yes. and we lose the majority of the people. So they decide their plan is going to be to hide and to pretend they're dead. Okay, mm-hmm. in that time. So they try and get everyone. So you have the Ishveni over the water, or whatever it is, wherever they're at, and you have Hal running up and down the streets screaming Maggie's name like crazy. So, first of all, if I was an alien, I would not think everyone is dead because I've got, you hear humans doing that. One human. Have, One human. One oh human. Which God. later on could be Tom Mason because he's going to be the sole survivor. Well, Ironic, right? Symbolic. All right. Well, then then we have this super <laughs> long ass death scene. And, and I love Qatar. I love him a lot more in Lourdes. So I'm really sad to see Qatar go. Um, we have this one long Qatar scene where he's pretty much has like something to say to every single person <laughs> in front of him and give them like words of wisdom before he passes. I'm sorry. And then well, we it, have. Was that 12 minutes of, to- of actual well, time? Well, it just felt like, it, considering. During the fact that they have like 10 to 20 minutes to get into the fallout shelter, it felt a little long. And then, of course, Tector is giving uh, Tom a lesson in shooting a rifle. So they had all this time, 10 to 20 minutes, to do all this exposition. Maybe the Svenny are late kind of aliens. Maybe they arrive late and they okay. knew this. Oh, now you're, now, you're, 
Now you're making excuses. I thought you'd we're be on my we're, page. We're gonna I thought you were on the same page with me. We're going to time this out. We're going to upload it as a bonus okay. YouTube video. We'll, we'll play act it, us three. But that's that's something. I know it's not 24, <laughs> but that's, I think that was a little long. Anyway, go for it. Okay, well, no matter what you think, uh, whether or not Tom was able to learn or not, it yeah. doesn't matter because as soon as I saw that wrench go up, I knew it was going to happen. I was mm. like, is there a door from to try and like shut close? I don't know what he's going to do with that. And then he made the comment, I'm like, oh, he's going to hit him on the head. Okay. Yeah, you don't just pick up a wrench to try to close a door. <laughs> I didn't know this is a clue. Gonna, I didn't know he was going to like kill, shut. knock Tom out. Yeah. What do you think, Nando? <laughs> With the wrench, I mean, I would have thought they would have shown it. I would have thought there would have been some major sacrifice scene where Tom is, like, locked out and you see him banging yeah. on a door to get in. I, that's the more, like, cliche approach. But, you know what? Tector, Tector I'll give it to him, you know? With the quieter He figured just knock him out and put him someplace safe, wherever that was. Which he had time to do. Which he apparently had time <laughs> Sorry, to do. Guys. To Sorry. knock him out and put him someplace safe before he gets to frame up and set up a shot. Well, and he put on the mask, so and that way he, yeah. he fooled him. Cause well, he's that, like, I'll give him. It takes like 30 seconds. He died a hero. He died. That takes 15 at most. I, I'm giving him 30 <laughs> seconds. Oh, my God. I'm giving him 30. Next time, he's time it. Have your little stop. He had goggles on top of it. You have to put the goggles on top. And fans, please write in. Let us know <laughs> what you think real time it could have taken for all of this to get set up. Um, I'm going to guess real time probably at most 25 minutes. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Which which puts it too late. Okay, I'm sorry. They didn't exactly know that they were going to come in 20 <laughs> minutes. Which my theory of them being late could be legit. I'm just saying, okay? Yes, they're late aliens. Hey, they're he aliens was burned. Who, Maybe he can't late. see where he's going. The, they're the very shmeny. lazy. They're very lazy. They he's like to get everything on, on late. Skitters that don't know what they're doing. Okay. Anyway, it all it all works cool. out. That was an amazing shot. That was an amazing sacrifice with... Was that an amazing shot? Because he missed. He missed. He hit him, but he hit him in the metal part. And he went, oh, I see you. Okay, let's kill him. And that's when the ship came by. But the ship got blown up. Ship went down in the debris. Uh, which, by the way, if the ship went down, shouldn't it have knocked over that robot? That's funny guy. Well, it, it went down in front of him. Yeah. But in typical fashion, movie fashion, it just, you know, was dramatically in front of him. Okay. That's I all. mean, here's the thing. Ultimately, did things go as planned? No. But it all worked out in the end. Mm-hmm. And that's what matters. It all worked out in the end. Yeah, Even though Tom is trapped <laughs> right now under rubble, oh, that Maggie me is out. completely unconscious, and we supposedly don't know if she's alive or dead. Okay, but you what, what, did, that. what did Dingo and, ding, ding, ding and say? He said, let's hope that the, dawn, that the dawn is, in fact, darkest before. No. No. The, it's darkest before the dawn. Let's hope that's, it. Let's hope that's true, that it's there darkest before the dawn. Not that the dawn is darkest. <laughs> That would be a really messed up thing. That would be. So that there be. you go. <laughs> so we're at that point. We're at that point. Yeah, a lot when, of cliff. Like I said, a lot of cliffhangers. I thought a lot of little cliffhangers here and there. Yeah, which I liked. I enjoyed. Yeah. It. All right. What? Nothing. You can <laughs> say. It. I was just gonna scold you. All right. Let's get into prediction. Okay. I try and I try. Now, you're after Buzz TV predictions. All right. I know this tends to be the part where we, just even by theorizing, give away spoilers. So if you don't like spoilers, tune out now. We won't hate you. Follow us on Twitter. Rate us that. on iTunes. Rate us on iTunes. All that good stuff. Don't forget mm. to get in Walmart. Mm. Walmart.com slash savings catcher for more savings. Um, but, okay, so spoilers. First off, if you watch the trailer, Maggie's alive, which yes. I am upset about. Okay. I'm not upset, upset that she's. <laughs> and that, that, You're upset not, that you were spoiled. I'm upset that I was spoiled. Yes. Because that's such a big cliffhanger. Then why not leave it? You know, just for a little bit. Just, you weren't worried about me. Tom. Tom could be dead too. Tom was shown Tom to be could alive. Die. Tom could be suffocating as we speak right now. I'm just. He's I'm just with his lighter. Out. Yeah, I'm the light would have gone out. <laughs> <laughs> Come on, I'm people. Just giving you, I'm just giving you a little hard time, that's all. Um, I mean, I think the second mass, eventually, like, the, the way things are going, I imagine the second mass to just be Weaver, Pope, and the Masons. Kind of like how it started to <laughs> turn out to be, what, second end of second season? Weaver, Pope, and the Masons. Yeah. Could be end up being that, considering their losses from this battle. I mean, we're down to <laughs> add, 30 able-bodied well, people. Well, and maybe we'll keep Sarah and Dingon. Okay. He seems pretty good, especially since we lost guitar. We need 
we need somebody else to kind of jump in as he's a recurring not, character. Okay. He's not a scientist, but still as a recurring character. Okay. He's yeah. an electrician, so we could use that. Yeah, he's an electrician. Well, okay. What? <laughs> what? <laughs> I don't think it's going to happen next week. Um, well, Maggie's going to be apparently paralyzed because that's what was quoted in the, one of the texts. She's paralyzed from the waist down. Mm. So now, unlike Hal, who was paralyzed before, she's now actually paralyzed. So we'll see what that goes. But I think Pope and Sarah are going to develop more of a relationship. And maybe down the line, there might be some baby making. Because Tom and Anne went in a hospital room one time and there was a baby that happened. That would be interesting. And look at that turned out. Yeah, look yeah, at that turned that out. That happens. I'm going to say <laughs> if, if, if we understood that correctly from the scenes for next week and, and uh, Maggie is paralyzed from the waist down, I'm going to say that there is possibly some technology, the same technology that, let's say, Ben possesses mm-hmm. on him mm-hmm. that may be able to make her use her legs. So maybe uh, being harnessed somehow in a way. That kind of technology. Do you have a theory? Or you just, you I think... think Ben might get skitterized. Okay. Is that pretty well, he's already kind of skitterized because he's got the harness. But kind he... of, but but maybe more, yeah. Okay, interesting. Sorry. Well, we'll see. I mean, we've got a few more episodes to go. A lot of crazy theories. Mm-hmm. Um, definitely a lot going on. Let us know what you guys think. Because it's getting good. It just continues to get good. What? <laughs> I don't know. It was just funny the way you said it. Yes, I did love this episode. I just didn't like, you know what I mean. I love, like the the I love the show. Tweet, <laughs> tweet at Roya some happy thoughts. She needs them. She needs your support. She's obviously very angry. And you guys can do that at Hey Roya. That's yes. A-T-Y-R-O-Y-A. And I'm also on Instagram. And you can tell me how much you love Pope and Sarah together. And Pope <laughs> is awesome. <laughs> and you can reach me on Twitter or Instagram at Nandovel, N-A-N-D-O-V-E-L. And follow us here at AfterBuzz TV on Facebook, Twitter, Instagram, all that fun stuff. Um, it's been a fun show, you guys. I enjoyed doing it. It was a fun episode to watch. We'll certainly be back for next episode to discuss. Lots to discuss, I'm sure. I am excited to see where Ben and Lexi are headed. Uh, perhaps galaxy far, far away. Who knows? But until that time, we will see you next week. From executive producers Maria Menounos, Kevin Undergaro, Phil Svitek, and the entire AfterBuzz TV staff, we would like to thank you for listening to the AfterBuzz TV network. To watch or listen to other After shows and post comments or questions, be sure to visit AfterBuzzTV.com. I'm Sir Richard Wentworth, and this has been a presentation of AfterBuzz TV. Buzz you later. The views expressed herein are those of the hosts only and do not necessarily reflect the views of AfterBuzz TV or its owners or principal. Thank you for watching AfterBuzz TV on YouTube. For more of your favorite after shows and interviews, subscribe to our channel here, and be sure to share your opinion on the episode in the comment section below here. We'd love to see what you guys are buzzing about. Thanks again. Buzz you later.